All right, hi everyone. My name is Francisco McGallan. Thanks for uh, joining us today in this RISA Live session here on compiling print reports in RISA 3D. So today we're gonna be covering how to put, how to basically gather all of that output, that nice and useful output you have from RISA 3D and how to get that into um, a nice organized package so that you can include that into your calc packs. So if you're sending that to you know, your plan checker for review or just whoever is reviewing your calcs, we wanna show you how to make that really easy to, uh, to digest and just make it clear for anyone who's looking at your calcs. So what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and just solve this model. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just solve a batch with an envelope solution. So here you can see in the background that I've got this uh, two-story structure here. This is actually our tutorial structure. So it's got a few different materials in there. And it's really, that's the purpose of it. It was just to show you how many, um, you know, all the different materials and element types. You see we have wall panels, we have members, uh, wood members, steel members, concrete walls, concrete members. So we really cover the whole gamut here with this model. So I just solved the model, batch with an envelope, meaning we have results for each load combination. And then on the envelope side, it means we have mins and maxes. So that's going to show you your worst case values. That's the nicest way to just get, you know, real quick, get an answer if your members are passing or failing based on all the load combinations that you ran. So what we want to do now is just go ahead and um, show you the snapshot button. So that icon is gonna be up here in the upper left, which is your little camera icon. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna hit this icon here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us an opportunity to create some graphics that you can include at the beginning of your calcs. Because no one likes to get a calc pack where it's just numbers and tables and you don't really know what to make out of it because you don't have uh, a feel for the structure that it pertains to. So let's go ahead and create some nice graphics. Um, the first thing we'll create is just one with loads and the member labels displayed. So you just come up here to your quick view area and you can say, let's go ahead and display the, the member label. So if I hit this little member, this um, member label icon, I can say display my member labels. And so now you see you have all of those. And then I can also turn on my loads here and display those. So you can choose you know, various basic load cases if you need to display them for each one. So that'll make it really nice for your plan checker to, um, to understand the, I can turn off my nodes as well and make it really easy to see those member labels and the loads applied. So I just hit my snapshot button here, but before we do that, let me give it a more logical name. So let's call this one labels plus loads. And I'll just hit snapshot here. And by the way, you can also pan this around and move it as, as you know how you need to. You can zoom in and zoom out. Um, and so you can get it to not fit perfectly there. And so it's really easy to see those different labels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and center it like that and say snapshot. And so now it's saved it to the folder that has our model contained in it. So let's just go ahead and do this one more time with, uh, this time we'll display the graphical code checks. So if I hit my snapshot icon again, this time I'm gonna say, let's actually go ahead and just display these on a unity check basis on the color coded uh, perspective there. So what I need to do is just say that I'd like to display my unity checks based on an envelope solution. So once I do that, you can now see uh, the member labels. Let's go ahead and turn those off. So it's a little bit easier to see everything. So I just hit uh, none here. And then what I'll do is turn my Unity checks back on. So now you have a color coded basis here. Uh, the colors match up to the legend. It shows the plan checker that everything is passing, except for this looks like this one beam back here is actually failing. So you'd obviously want to make sure you can take care of that before you submit your calcs. But it shows you the Unity check value. So you, know, you have 0.14, for example, on this beam. So it works by a mile. And then the color coded basis is a nice view just to make sure that everything passes. So let's just go ahead and call this one Unity checks. So now I can hit snapshot and we'll save that one as well. Um, I can also, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is if I go back into the snapshot, I can, uh, I can basically select a few of these members if I only want to talk about a couple of them in my calcs. So if I hit control and then click, and then I hit my dim lock or uh, this icon here. So basically I can single those elements out now so that you're only focused on those ones. So that's going to make it nice if you, if you, know, if you get uh, some responses back to your original calc submittal and they say, hey, we just want to, you know, we want some feedback on these two particular beams or this one beam and this one column. So you can, it's nice that you can single those out in a view and simply add that to your snapshot list as well. So now we've got some nice graphics that we can include at the beginning of the calcs to give uh, whoever's looking at them a nice, a nice rundown of what they're going to look at. So what we can do now is just go to your printer icon in the upper left and say, this time we're going to print a report. So this is a cool new interface that I'm a really big fan of. I think it's a lot easier to put together calculation packages. It's just more intuitive. So what we're gonna do is 
we can use these uh, check boxes here, which you see there's little carrots next to them. So what you can do is actually expand them further and further. So for example, there's this input checkbox and results checkbox. But if I were to check both of those with a model like this, I could be somewhere in the realm of thousands of pages. So what we want to do is kind of filter these down so that, you know, whoever we're submitting these calcs to, it's an easy to digest uh, set of calcs. And you're really only giving them the information that they need. They don't need uh, stresses for every member along the entire length of them because that would just be way too many pages. So let's go ahead and just do, um, in this case, let's take a look at the input. And I'm just going to check all of this information because I don't think it's going to amount to that much. It's only 30 pages, which isn't too bad. So now what I'm going to do is uh, be more selective when it comes to the results section. Because this is really, if I check that box, it's going to amount to thousands of pages probably. So what I'll do instead is I'm just going to come into the results and then I'm going to go to the envelope solution because that's just going to give me the maxes and the mins for everything. Um, you know, and if someone asks that they want to see the exact results for an exact load combination, then we can go back and give them that level of detail if we need to. So let's just go to envelope and then we'll go to elements. And then you can, here you can see members, plates, solids, wall panels. So I'm going to choose just the members in this case. And then once I expand that one, I can say, let me just go ahead and report the code checks, the reinforcement, and the suggested designs for uh, the members in my, in my model. So you can see it only added four pages here. You can see a nice page count there in the bottom right. And then I also want to include the results since we had some wall panels. So let's go ahead and expand this wall panels carrot here. And then let's go ahead and choose that I want to report the reinforcement and the design. So I just click those two boxes. It only added a page information. And you can toggle through these pages. You can click to the last page. And then you can get a quick view just by expanding this to, uh, to zoom in and see what your results are. So um, once we're happy with this, that this is going to be nice and clear for whoever's checking our calc, so we can just click out of it. Um, another cool thing that we have is the filter option. So you can click this filter button here. And then what I can do now is go ahead and say, well, actually, I changed my mind. I only need to show my plan checker the, uh, for members. I only need to show them the section set that's called concrete column or any of these section sets that we created for that matter. So it's cool because you can just filter out on a really particular basis. So if I hit filter now, watch this, this is 35 pages right now. And if I filter it, it's going to go all the way down to 22 pages because we took out a lot of information that didn't pertain to that particular column section set. So you can see here, it also tells you that you have a filter applied to this particular section. So it lets you know that um, a lot of information is being filtered out. So once we have that, we can also uh, drag these these sections here to actually move them within the, the project. So if I just click it and drag it, you can see that I can actually reorder it and it'll live update here in my preview section on the right hand side. Um, you can also save a report template. And then you can also actually before we go to that, another cool thing that you can do is if you decide you don't need something, it's really easy to just click it and you can drop it off to the left and it gets rid of it in your print report. So you can do that really quickly and just get rid of items that you don't want in your print report. Uh, the other thing that's cool is that you can save this as a template. So if you work on a pretty similar project basis where everything's um, pr pretty similar and you know the output's going to be similar, um, you can actually save this as a template. So I'll just hit my ellipsis button here and I can say, let me go ahead and create a new report for this one and we'll call it a uh, building template, for example. So now that I know the info that I want out of this model, I can save that for later. It's, I'm just going to go ahead and say okay to that. And so now you'll see it here. Every time you go into a new model and solve it, you can just click this template here for future use. So that's cool and really time saving as well. Uh, once we have that taken care of, we can now uh, go to detail reports tab. So right now we were in the spreadsheets tab and we can jump into the detail reports tab. So once you jump into this tab, you have all of these different detail reports for all of these members on a per load combination basis. So that's kind of a lot of information there. So you can, you can filter this down to an envelope basis and you can see that the list of uh, items here got a lot shorter. And then you can filter this out for our members and wall panels specifically. So all it is is just you can check this box and if I go to the bottom here, you can now see it says wall panel uh, custom WP3. And if I just go to my last page, you'll see that my detail report is now included in there. So that's one way of adding a detail report. The other way is going back into your 3D view and what you can do here is if I hit my detail report button and I already know beforehand what I want to include, I can say, let me go ahead and add to full report. I can just hit that checkbox there. And so now when I go back to my uh, report printing tab, I'll have this detail report for M140 in my case. 
shown here at the end of my calc pack. And so now I can also drag that and move that around in my calculation package, of course. And then I can also expand these calcs too. So um, if I got rid of this, jump back into my 3D view, and if I say, let me go ahead and take a look at that detail report again, but really the reason I'm including it is because I want the plan checker to see all of the expanded calcs. So if I hit expanded and hit okay, and then I add to the full report this time, it's gonna be a lot more calcs because they're uh, we're really showing each limit state check. So if I go back to report printing now, I can see that I've got my detailed envelope uh, report there. And so if I go to the last page again, you can see that I now have all of those um, code checks there that are reported for us. So you can see if I zoom in, all of these are gonna be nicely reported here for you. So that's a great way if you have a particular member that's kind of uh, niche and you need to show off all the different uh, equations that were performed to check it, that's a good way to show that to your plan checker. Um, lastly, we can go into the advanced tab and then we can show how to add those snapshots that we took originally, right? Because those are important to have at the beginning of our calcs. So if I just expand this images section, I can say, I see this one that I called labels and loads, and then I also have the one that I called unity checks. So all I have to do is just check those two boxes, and you see right now that they were added to the end, but it's really easy just to drag them all the way up to the top. And that way you have a nice little intro to your calc pack. So if I jump to the front page now, you can see that I have my, my graphic there that's gonna show my plan checker the loads applied and make it really easy for them to digest the rest of the calcs there. So the mission here is of course to just make something that's easy for someone who hasn't seen the project before to really get a good feel for it and uh, be able to digest those results. So uh, we've added the images now. You can also add in an external image. So if I go to add item here, um, let's say that I wanted to include a floor plan of a screenshot of some of my drawings because that was gonna make more sense to the calcs that I was doing. So I got this one, uh, the screenshot that I took here called floor plan. So if I just click that and say open, if I go to the miscellaneous items now, I can just check that box. And if I go again to the end of my calcs, you'll see that it's here uh, ready for me to look at. So if I just go ahead and jump to the last page and we can open that up, I can now have this included. This would be a nice page to have at the front of my calcs. You know, my plan checker, a good idea of the, the building we're working on and the floor plan of it. So I can click out of that. And then uh, the next thing we'll do is go ahead and show, well, we should look, take a look at the print preview already. So obviously you can uh, really easily toggle through these pages. And then at this point, we really put together a nice calc pack. So we have shows you all the bells and whistles that you kind of have available to you to uh, really filter out certain items from your spreadsheet and make sure that it's concise, but also still valuable for someone to read. So at this point, all you have to do is just select your printer here, and then you can go ahead and uh, hit, hit print there. So in this case, we'll just probably wanna go to PDF so you can see the final result. So what I've done already beforehand is I printed it to PDF, and so I've got it available to me now. So let's just jump to the first page. Um, and so you can see I had that floor plan there, so you can imagine that if this is just a project unbeknownst to you, and you know, someone just gives you this calc pack, it's gonna be really easy to get a good feel for the floor plan of it. We have all of our dimensions shown there. And then not only that, as I continue scrolling through my calcs, I can see, okay, great, so now I have an isometric view. I have all my unity checks there, so someone's proving to me that everything's passing as far as the code checks go, and now I can really start diving into the specifics of things. So I can see that my node information is there, and I can really toggle through all of this information here, and then toward the end, which is probably the information that everyone cares about, is just that everything is passing. So we saw that graphically, and then we also see that in a spreadsheet format. So our loads are included there in a spreadsheet format, so you can see how, there's, how much information there is and how um, it's an exercise in being concise so that your calcs can be thoroughly reviewed in a quick manner, um, but also be something that you can come back to and make sense of. So here we have our code checks for our wood. Everything is below uh, 1.0 for the most part, and so we're good to go. So that's a quick crash course on the creation of uh, print reports to including your calc packs to using Risa 3D. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So uh, definitely join us next Thursday at the same exact time, and also su subscribe to our channel so you can get a reminder when we're going to go live. And uh, we look forward to, to showing you the next thing we have. Thanks so much for tuning in.